Joining me again is CNN uh, safety analyst David Susi, also Deborah Herzman, president of the National Safety Council and former chair of the NTSB. Uh, David, obviously there's a lot of difference between this and what we know about Malaysia Flight 370. One thing though is similar is that they both did not have real-time tracking information that could have given constant data. Mm -hmm. w still, why do these planes not have this? That's the question. We've had that question now for at least six or seven years. Is it just years. money? It's partly money. Uh, you know, part of it is because of the fact that there is no regulation that requires it. So, and that's where it should begin. If you don't do that, then there's some issues for the airlines as to what they can write off on their taxes. It sounds simple. It sounds stupid that they're doing that, but in fact, without having that, they can't accelerate depreciation, and some airlines wouldn't be able to afford that. What would this technology allow? What would it? What it would allow is that all the information about where the aircraft is specifically at all times would be reported. Other information as well, like the cabin altitude, for example, is something that would be critical to have. If we'd have had that information on 370, we would have known if there was an in-flight breakup. We would have known a lot about what happened to that airplane that we don't know now. So, Deborah, you know, David's saying it's a question of them being forced to do this by laws. What body would actually mandate that? Well, there's a lot of different levels of requirements when it comes to aviation. I'd say the first and the hardest level of requirement is the national uh, standards. And for the, for the U.S., this would be like the Federal Aviation Administration requiring something. But when so that would be each country having their own national standard. That's right. I mean, that's the, hard, the real hard standard. But the best standard would be to get some international standard because we're not seeing planes lost over Des Moines or Detroit. What we're seeing is planes being lost in other areas of the world where they don't have the kind of radar coverage that we have that's land-based over the U.S. Um, but, you know, getting this international standard is a real challenge because when you go to an organization like ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, you've got to get agreement of multiple countries. And that's not just countries like the U.S. or France. It's African countries, South American right. countries, everyone. Do you agree, David, that, I mean, unless there is some sort of push for actual regulation, airlines aren't going to do it on their own? You know, I think we have seen airlines lead with technology in certain situations, like early adoption of enhanced ground proximity warning systems or things like that. But really what you, you're trying to get is not the folks who are the first adopters or the early adopters. Mm -hmm. You're actually trying to get everyone. Mm -hmm. And you've got to pick up the folks that, for example, that are low-cost carriers right. in Indonesia. Um, David, there was a task force, wasn't there, after mm -hmm. Malaysia Flight 370 that had recommendations. Mm -hmm. Does anything come of that, or is it just a question of sort of well, bureaucracy? It has, but it seems here? like it's stuck in this bureaucracy. Uh, 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 Nancy Graham, who was in charge of that project at the first at ICAO, did a great job of getting it started, getting everybody at the meeting in, in Montreal. I think it was late July, maybe early August. And they said, we're going to get this fixed. And ICAO, or uh, Inmarsat at that point said, we're going to give this to them for free. Most of the aircraft that have it, in fact, Nine, about 90% of the aircraft that are out there do have the equipment installed, but they mm -hmm. don't necessarily have the subscription. And that represents about 99% of all the flying pa passengers in that realm. So what you say they don't have the subscription, you mean every time there's a, uh, the, it sends data, that they get charged? Well, no, it's a matter of just saying, I want to have that data. It's okay. a flat fee, and after that flat fee, as the information So goes, they have the technology, they, they do. just don't act. The subscription they it. absolutely do and now in this case uh, they, they didn't have the technology right. installed they were in the process of adding the swift system do you think it's inevitable Deborah, that this is going to happen or are you not so confident you know I think it's inevitable when we look out at a long timeline but for example the member airlines the International Air Transport Association they actually are looking at many of these recommendations through mm. this task force some of them they have put on a three-year track right. And so just not, it's not going to be fast enough, but I do think over time we'll get a lot better at this. Your phone, my car, right. we can do this. Uh, Deborah, thanks for being on. appreciate it. Deborah yeah. Herzman, uh, David Susi as well. Up next, the quick response from AirAsia CEO to this trend.